Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain vertical ramus osteotomy. It is mainly used for mandibular setback. It is a rapid procedure with less chances of inferior alveolar nerve injury. The vertical ramus osteotomy is a procedure whereby full thickness osteotomies of the ramai are performed. When performed bilaterally, they divide the mandible into two smaller condyle bearing segments and a large segment consisting of the interior ramus mandibular body including the teeth and chin. The osteotomies uh, are done posterior to the inferior alveolar canal. In contrast to the BSSO, the chance of inferior alveolar nerve injury is greatly reduced. This is a procedure that can be employed for posterior repositioning, mandibular rotations, and shortening of the posterior ramus. These procedures cannot be uh, used for lengthening of the ramus and or mandibular advancement. Do a proper planning for the orthognathic surgery. The osteotomy extends from the sigmoid notch to the inferior border of the mandible, just posterior to the inferior alveolar canal. The osteotomy is usually performed using an oscillating saw from a transoral approach. This is the oscillating saw shown in this figure. Alternatively, the procedure uh, can also be performed using a submandibular approach and a reciprocating saw for the osteotomy is used. For uh, mandibular setbacks, the push, the proximal segment, this one, that will rest lateral to the reposition distal segment. This larger one is the distal segment and this smaller one is the proximal segment. So this proximal segment that will rest lateral to the repositioned distal segment. Mandibulo maxillary fixation is performed to position the large tooth bearing segment to the desired relationship with the maxilla. A prefabricated surgical splint or wafer may be used to facilitate this. Care must be taken to maintain the normal fossa condyle relation and to avoid condylar displacement. Usually, this is achieved by manual positioning of the condyle bearing segment superiorly into the glenoid fossa. Most surgeons who perform this operation through a transoral approach will choose not to perform any internal fixation and instead maintain MMF for two to six weeks. Internal fixation is difficult to perform through a trans oral approach because of the problem with the excess. It is easier if an external approach is used and then can be performed using mini plates and monocortical screws. Bone plate or bicortical screw osteosynthesis can also be performed using transbuckle trocar instrumentation. If the internal fixation has been applied, the MMF is released and the resulting occlusion is checked against the pre-planned position. The splint may be fixed to the maxillary teeth with a few thin wires and left in place during the healing phase to allow for neuromuscular adaption and position control. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.